Order of the day number three. Arts Council of New Zealand, Toy Aotearoa Bill, first reading. Speaker. I call the Honourable Chris Finlayson. Mr Speaker, I move that the Arts Council of New Zealand, Toy Aotearoa Bill, be now read a first time. At the appropriate time, I intend to move that the bill be considered by the Government Administration Committee, that the Government Committee uh, present its final report or and before 3 December 2010, and that the committee have the authority to meet at any time while the House is sitting except during oral questions and during any evening on a day on which there has been a sitting of the House and on a Friday in a week in which there has been a sitting of the House despite standing orders 192 and 1951B and C. Mr Speaker, this is a great day for the arts in New Zealand. Uh, this bill replaces the Arts Council Act 1994 and the purpose of the bill is to streamline the governance structure of the Arts Council of New Zealand, otherwise known as Creative New Zealand. Let me remind the House of the role the Council plays in the cultural life of New Zealand. When Mr Robertson goes to a performance by Black Grace or the Auckland Philharmonic Orchestra and stays for the entire performance, when he attends a Takirua or Auckland Theatre production, uh, when he supports his friends sons and daughters performances and smoke free rock quest where it attends the writers and readers festivals or style pacifica mr robertson should know that these arts events are supported by the arts council and they're just a fraction of the arts activities and organizations that receive support from this great institution the council also awards bursaries and scholarships to help our best and brightest in their chosen field partners with local authorities on community arts initiatives around New Zealand and awards hundreds of grants each year through the contestable funding program. It also administers major awards such as the Prime Minister's Awards for Literary Achievement and the Michael King Fellowship. The Council's decisions are made independent of the government and informed by assessments from fellow artists. I strongly believe in the arms length funding model. Uh, because I don't think politicians should be making decisions about particular arts projects. Under the current legislation, the governance of the Arts Council consists of a seven-member council, and I acknowledge the great contribution of Helen Kedgley, the sister of uh, Sue Kedgley, two seven-member arts boards, to Waka Toy and the Arts Board, and a committee of the Arts Board, the Pacific Arts Committee. I must say I've always considered the structure was weird. It's cumbersome and it's top heavy. A ratio of up to 28 appointed members for 55 staff is disproportionate. The four governing bodies are also a significant cost to the organisation and this diverts resources from Creative New Zealand's core business, arts, arts organisations and arts development. Other significant inefficiencies have been identified. The work of the Council and the Boards overlaps. The Council is expected to develop effective strategy and policy despite having no direct contact with the sector. The Council is accountable for organisational performance even though it has no part in the Board's decision making. The lines of accountability between the Arts Board and management aren't clear and the Pacific Arts Committee's status as, if you like, a subsidiary of the Arts Board has also complicated accountability arrangements. This bill addresses these shortcomings by replacing the current complex structure with a single board to be called the Arts Council. It will have 13 members who will be appointed for their knowledge of professional and community arts. Part one of the bill prescribes the new Arts Council's functions, powers and membership and reaffirms the Council's independence from ministerial direction in relation to cultural matters. For the purposes of the Crown Entities Act 2004, the members of the Arts Council will constitute the Board. The Arts Council will be responsible for determining strategic direction and priorities and for funding decisions. Under Clause 7C, funding will be allocated to projects for professional and community arts, including funding for Māori arts, the arts of Pacific Island peoples of New Zealand and the arts of the diverse cultures of New Zealand. The Council will set guidelines for the allocation of funding and for community arts providers. Where appropriate, the Council will use peer assessment processes for the allocation of funding, 
uh, and it's to be emphasised that Māori are to be included in any assessment process relevant to Māori arts and Pacific Islands peoples in assessment of arts of the Pacific Islands peoples of New Zealand. Clause 10.4 of the Bill stipulates that at least four members of the Arts Council will be appointed with regard to their knowledge of Te Eo Māori, Tikanga Māori and Māori Arts, and at least two will be appointed with regard to their knowledge of the arts of the Pacific Islands peoples of New Zealand. These responsibilities reflect the government's particular responsibilities for tangata whenua and for the maintenance and promotion of Pacific Islands arts, particularly for those nations where such a large number of their populations now reside in New Zealand. Under Clause 11.1 of the Bill, at least four Council members representing Māori will constitute a Committee of the Arts Council. The Committee will give advice and recommendations to the Council on matters relating to Māori Arts and carry out any other functions or powers delegated to it by the Council. Under Clause 10 of the Bill, the Minister for Arts, Culture and Heritage will appoint all 13 members of the Council the Minister of Māori Affairs will be consulted on the appointment of members uh, with knowledge of tikanga Māori and Māori Arts, and the Minister for Pacific Island Affairs will be consulted on the appointment of members with knowledge of the arts and uh, of uh, Pacific Islands peoples. So, Mr Speaker, I believe this new governance structure has very clear benefits. First, responsibility for policy, strategy, direction and the allocation of funds will be contained within one body for greater efficiency. Fewer resources will be required and staff will be freed up to focus on artists, arts organisations and arts development. Māori and Pacific Arts will be represented uh, at the Council table with full participation in policy making, strategy setting as well as funding decisions. The Council's strategy will be informed by direct experience of funding, disbursement and sector issues. There will be clear lines of accountability for the Council to the Minister and between the Council and Chief Executive. And a more streamlined structure will improve service delivery and I believe it's going to be less costly. Under the Bill, the powers and functions of the existing arts boards related to community arts providers and community arts councils will transfer to the Arts Council. Under Section 10 of the 1994 Act, the Arts Council must produce and consult on a strategic plan every three years. Uh, this bill doesn't continue this requirement, the reason being that under the Crown Entities Act 2004, the Arts Council is already required to produce a statement of intent stakeholders can expect to continued consultation through the annual letter of expectation uh, from the Minister of Arts, Culture and Heritage. Mr Speaker, the Arts Council looked at various governance models during its review in consultation with former chairs of the Council, the Arts Boards and Pacific Arts Committees and related government agencies. The Ministry for Culture and Heritage consulted Māori and Pacific Arts uh, arts organisations and also community leaders about their view and I have to say there was broad support for the proposals but concerns about representation of Māori and Pacific Islands peoples in the new structure. Uh, I think I've tried to address these measures in the bill in order to address those concerns. The select committee will of course provide opportunity for further feedback. So I'm confident the governance model I've outlined today will improve the Arts Council's efficiency and responsiveness and, and ensure the best investment of resources for the benefit of New Zealand artists, arts organisations and indeed the wider community. I hope the bill will receive wide support as the changes it includes will deliver better value for taxpayer dollars and a more efficient service directory for an organisation that has done a great deal for New Zealand uh, since a previous national government created it in the 1960s. I commend the bill to the House. Members, the question is that the motion be agreed to. I call Grant.